Hey BC Boom family, it's your Lisa here. So as you guys know, I teach third grade and I have a student in my class who is very expressive in his emotions. Sometimes those emotions are happy, anxious, or frustrated. One thing that I love about him is that he is always acknowledging how he feels, even if it may come out in an unhealthy way or if it's not appropriate for a school setting but he expresses himself and he acknowledges his feelings. In 2015, I was tasked with the challenge to become more self-aware and to express my raw, my rawest feelings and emotions and then to communicate those things with the people that are around me to build deeper and better relationships. It was a struggle for me because sometimes we want to push down the truth or push down how we're feeling in the moment because we don't want other people to know the full truth or we're scared of being judged. And one of the things that really helped me was journaling. Journaling was that safe space for me to write down everything that I was feeling in that moment without being judged. I was able to really collect my thoughts and really get to the root issues of why I was feeling what I was feeling. It helped me to become more self-aware. Then, once I had the language to speak about how I was feeling, I was able to communicate that with my counselor. I was able to communicate it with my friends, as well as with God. The good thing about God, though, was that I didn't have to come to him with this pre-script. I could just come to him with, in my rawest form, in my raw, rawest emotions, and he was never there to judge me, um, but he knew how I was feeling. And the great thing is he wanted me to talk about my feelings and to be okay with sharing my emotions with him. Journaling helped me to do that. And now I just kind of come to God with everything that I'm feeling and, um, and just kind of give it to him. Just like my student and myself, we have to acknowledge our feelings and be okay with inviting God into our emotions, into the things that we feel in that moment. The great thing about God is he's not judgmental. He wants to hear all of your thoughts as if he doesn't already know, but he wants us to talk to him and to be okay with communicating with him in every way possible. It doesn't have to be a fancy prayer. It doesn't have to be this long script. It can be whatever you are feeling in that moment, right then and there and inviting God into that space. Our ministry partners are going to dive deep into this topic and I hope that you have your notes ready. Stay tuned. Have you ever watched a TV show or a movie and figure out who the bad guy is? But none of the characters in this show have found out yet. You're practically yelling at your TV or your phone, no, don't trust him, don't believe her. I mean, it's frustrating because you can see what's happening, but other people in the movie can't. You put the pieces together about who the bad guy is, but everyone else is completely unaware. Maybe you've also had an experience like that in real life. You felt like you figure out something about someone. You thought, that teacher has it out for you. Or that friend was betraying you. That parent was trying to take all of the fun out of life. And in that moment, that person became the bad guy. And you couldn't imagine them in any other way. You couldn't possibly fathom that that teacher was looking out for your best interest. That friend was being someone you could trust and that parent was showing you some grace. See, even though life isn't a movie, we all have rotating good guys and bad guys, don't we? And when someone works their way into our bad guy list, it's tough for them to get out, isn't it? We've made up our minds about that person and boxed them into our idea of who we think they are and nothing they do can change it now. If we're honest, I bet some of us would admit that at some point or another, we've seen God in a similar way. I mean, we couldn't say it out loud, especially in church, but God kind of seemed like a person we couldn't trust. He was kind of like, 
bad guy. And maybe God was portrayed angry, mean, or constantly looking to see if you're messing up. Or maybe God seemed like a distant grandparent in the sky. God's nice, but God someone disinterested in what you're going through. For many people, when we go through seasons of life when we feel like God is the bad guy, it's hard to imagine things any other way. And so we just kind of keep our space. It's tough to feel close to someone when you feel like you can't trust them. Would any of us want to be close to a friend who was distant, cold, judgmental, or mean? Probably not. So we don't really want to engage in worship or small groups. We are not really interested in praying or reading the Bible. We're not interested in spending time with God at all. If that's you, you're okay. You're good. I get it. I've totally been there. But I've also learned that sometimes how we feel about God doesn't really represent what is true about God. As important as our emotions are, they're not always representing the truth. And here's what's pretty cool. You and I can find an incredible demonstration of this as we look at what Jesus prayed right before he was arrested and put to death. In the New Testament, the second part of the Bible, we find the book of Luke, which is one of the four accounts of Jesus' life. Luke was a doctor who investigated what everyone said about Jesus and wrote it all down. In his account, Luke does a great job of giving us some of an insight into what Jesus was going through as he got closer to being arrested and put to death. In fact, on that very night, Jesus would be arrested. He asked his closest friend to go with him to Gethsemane, a garden in Jerusalem. Now, why did Jesus want his friends to go with him to the park at night? You see, Jesus knew that he was on the verge of something painful. Jesus wanted to talk to his heavenly father about it. And Jesus wanted his friends there for support. Check out how it all happened. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw. He knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. This is so honest and vulnerable, and in true Jesus fashion, so humble. As much as we want to talk about Jesus being God in human body, it's important for us to understand that he was human. He is fully God, but he is also fully human. So he didn't like the idea of going through something really painful any more than the rest of us. So often in my own life, when things are not going well or the way I want, I want to blame God. I get frustrated that God would allow something difficult to happen, and I complain when God doesn't fix things immediately. I start to see God as the bad guy again, or assume that I'm being punished for some area of my life where my thinking or behavior has been bad. Whatever the difficult situation is, our reaction must speak to what we think about God. Internally, we might be wondering things like, does God really care about me? Does God care about my thoughts and feelings? Will God still love me if God knows how I really feel? Which brings us back to Jesus in the garden. A few things to note. Jesus was honest with his father. This is something that we can all learn from. Jesus asked his father to help or fix the situation. One of the simplest things we neglect or forget to do in difficult situations is to pause and ask God for help. But then check out what Jesus says next. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Minutes away from his betrayal, arrest, and torture, Jesus says, Father, I trust you no matter what happens. This doesn't make sense, not even a little bit, unless, Jesus believed something about God that we might have a hard time believing. Even when his circumstances didn't make sense, even when his fear felt overwhelming. Remember, Jesus was fully human, so his fear was real. Even when the future seemed terrible in every way imaginable, even with all of that happening, Jesus chose to trust what he knew to be true about God. See, it takes an extraordinary amount of trust in God to face extraordinarily difficult circumstances. And certainly, no circumstance matches what Jesus was about to face. But Jesus had a view of God and an understanding of God that comforted him, despite what he was about to face. So what did he know about God? 
Well, Jesus knew that his heavenly father was good, loving, and had a bigger picture in mind that will change everything for all humanity. Jesus also knew that God will walk him through his difficulty. Check out what happens next. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Jesus said, God, your will be done. And he was comforted by an angel. The angel appeared as comfort, but it didn't make the bad feelings go away. In fact, look how he was sweating. What's the significance of this? Well, it's cool to know that God didn't just cross his arms and say, good luck. No, God sent an angel, meaning God cared. God wanted to send comfort. God responded to his son's cry with compassion. Being real with God doesn't mean that you'll suddenly feel better. Bad circumstances feel bad. Jesus still felt agony. And it doesn't mean that your tough circumstances will disappear. Being honest with God doesn't automatically mean that things will go your way. It's more about trusting that God has your best interest in mind than it is about getting what you want. Jesus' words in his prayer are powerful, no doubt. But it wasn't about his words. It started with his words, but moved to being about his courage, honesty, and trust in God while he was having a really tough night. You and I can learn a lot from this. There will be a lot of tough nights in our lives. Nights where we wonder what God is doing and why. Nights where we don't understand what God is up to. And when that happens, you can consistently be real with God about how you feel. Because Jesus knew what God was like. He could be totally honest about how he felt about what he was going through. But Jesus also trusted God no matter what happened. Jesus could face whatever was coming because he could trust entirely in who God had proven to be through all of time. That's why how we see God matters. That's why if we have an idea about God that is inaccurate, it's a big deal. Because at some point, we're going to face difficult circumstances and tough seasons of life. And if we see God as someone waiting for us to mess up or hoping for a chance to punish us, we will have a more challenging time to be honest. On the other hand, if we choose to see God as always with us, for us, trustworthy, compassionate, we'll be able to trust that we can be real about how we feel in difficult times. Our circumstances and emotions may not change, but we'll have what and who we need to make it through. So what does this mean for us today? It means that we have permission to be real with God. We don't have to hide from God or be afraid to talk about how we feel. Being real with God about our hangups doesn't mean that we don't trust God. Our honest feelings simply show that we are human. I would say that how honest we are reveals how much we trust God. When we trust God completely, we don't hold back anything. What if you could call God right now and talk about what's going on in your heart and mind? What would you say? Okay, okay, maybe calling is a bit of a stretch. So I'll ask you this. What if you could text God? What would the message say? Maybe we should get the notes app and draft out what you might say. Let's practice it right now. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. So just tell God how you feel. What would you say if you could text God right now? What is the first thing that comes to mind? Something random, something important? What would you say? Now think about the top three places you spend the most time. What are they? Is it your school, your job, a sports team, home? Visualize and name those three places. Now, what would you say to God about each of those areas in your life? Now take a second.
Now think about something that is happening in your life that you don't really talk about with other people. Maybe it's something you have questions about. Maybe it's something you are excited about or hoping for. Whatever it is, take a moment and share it with God. Last one for now. And remember, you can always come back to practicing an exercise like this literally anytime. God always wants to hear from you. Okay, dig deep on this one. What is one thing that you have felt hesitant or afraid to say to God? If you're angry with God, say that. If you're disappointed at how something turned out, say that. If you're having a hard time trusting God, say that. God, thank you for listening and caring about what is going on in our world. You can be real with God about how you feel. When we're being honest with God, it creates an opportunity for us to see God in a way that we may not have known otherwise. God will prove to be faithful, loving, and close because, like with any other relationship, honesty builds a deeper and stronger connection. Here's a couple steps that we can start taking right away to be real with God about how we feel. Be honest with yourself. Start by asking yourself how you really feel. Is it your true response or reaction, or is it how you are supposed to feel? Remember who God is. God is loving, kind, compassionate, and all-knowing. God already knows your thoughts and feelings. So why do we need to tell God again? Because that's how trusting relationships work. Healthy relationships are real, open, and honest. God is a relational God who loves you and wants a trustworthy and honest relationship with you. We can't always know what God is up to or if our circumstances will change, but we do know that God loves us. When we trust that this is true, we can consistently be real with God about how we feel. When you go to small group, I want you to think about one area of your life where you're having a hard time trusting God. What would it look like for you to be real with God about that? We can consistently be real about how we feel. The truth is, God is good. God's goodness doesn't change when our circumstances are difficult. Jesus trusted God enough to be honest with how He felt. And because of Jesus, we can do the same. I hope that this lesson was so good for you. Remember, God wants every part of you. He wants your emotions, your feelings, um, the things that you try to hide. Just like my student and myself, challenge yourself to be self-aware and to acknowledge your emotions and allow God into those spaces. I hope that you have a great week.